Okay, to Aviv or not to Aviv? I know I mentioned this in the announcements last week, but I think I did it a disservice by just talking at you uh, and not maybe putting some of the Bible verses and things like that. Most people got what I was trying to say last week, but both Curtis and myself still got quite a lot of emails on this Aviv uh, issue going on this month. And so we thought, you know what, let's, we're both going to tackle this as quickly and succinctly as possible um, because some of the emails uh, were people actually that heard the announcement last week, but some were not. You know, there's people that are watching online that don't have the ability to do the live stream, so they're, they're part of, they're watching the teachings online. And uh, I know that some of the emails that came in was from that. Um, the reason I'm recording is because I'm going to post this on YouTube because I, I'm just getting so many emails almost daily on this issue and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put it out. This is why we've made the decision. Go through the scriptures as to why. Hopefully that will stop some of the emails because I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again and again, leading up to the feasts, there's other things that I need to be doing. Um, so I want to go through, you know, a bit more succinctly. A uh, person on the left is losing his marbles because they're hearing one report, they're hearing another report. For those who are not aware, some people are saying it's the month of Aviv, some are not. Uh, and we're in the category that we do not believe it's the Aviv. Uh, and I will explain as to why we came to, the, Curtis and I came to that decision. Um, now, there's some people, like the guy on the right, that are just standing and going, hmm, what's going on? What's going on? Um, now, because this is going online, if you disagree after what I've said, please don't email me. Because, like, just don't. I'm gonna, if you don't want to agree, that's fine. That's fine. But we're not here to cause division. The only reason I'm doing this is so that people know why we've decided it's not. First of all, the Aviv, Bali and Israel, what people don't realise is that there's actually a lot of conflict between the witnesses from the boots on the ground. Normally, when it's an easy year to call, if you want to call it that, everyone's generally in agreement, yep, yeah, Bali's Aviv, Bali's Aviv, everyone gets on. This year is not, and I knew this would happen way back when we tried to peg our dates in the ground, because either you end up with a really early set of Moedim in the year, or you end up with a really late set of Moedim in the year. And that window, the feasts will tend to land within a month window, like a four-week period, uh, just because of the difference between uh, a lunar slash solar calendar that's seasonally adjusted versus a Gregorian calendar. Um, so the first thing to bear in mind, the fact that all the witnesses over inspecting are conflicting amongst themselves should be reason to think, first off. It's, it's, this doesn't happen often and it, like, it should be clear cut. As Paul says, let us not forget the simplicity in Messiah. Um, but that's just me saying that. Let's, let's actually give some scripture as to why we came to the decision we came. And I'm going to literally put them up so that people are not just hearing me and going, yeah, 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 yeah I hear you, Michael. One of the requirements for, the, for it to be the month of Aviv the barley or the Aviv barley has to be shatter ready for the majority of the harvest at the new moon. So for those of you who don't know what that means, as barley grows, it goes through certain stages of growth. At the initial stages, the grain is very soft and pliable and filled with liquid. And as it gets to a certain point, it develops into a grain. And 
if you were to squish very early young barley, it would just squish and turn to mush. Now, the barley has to be a point where it has to break and be destroyed. And I've put here for the majority of the harvest, not a portion of the harvest. And I've put at the new moon, not, well, the barley might be ready in two weeks time. And a lot of the people that are giving the report that the barley is Aviv, they'll say this like, the Aviv, the barley will be ready at this time. And it's like, well, you don't know that. You're hoping it will be ready this time. Where am I getting this idea from? Exodus 9, 31 to 32, the plague of hail. The flax and the barley were struck. The word there for struck in the Hebrew means destroyed, killed. It is, it's the word used of someone striking someone to death. For the barley was in the head. In the head is not the, the correct translation. The Hebrew says the barley was a vive whatever Aviv means. Now, people assume it means green. We don't know that. We actually don't know that. And the flax was in bud, but the wheat and the spelt were not struck for they were late crops. This means that they were already in the ground. If you hit barley hard at the beginning of its life cycle, it will survive. But what happened in Egypt is that they lost a whole harvest, which as an agricultural society, people are going to die of starvation, is what that means. That's what that verse means. So here's the problem. Problem number one, if you only have a tiny section of the harvest that is ready to be destroyed or aviv, and the plague of hail occurs, you don't have a whole harvest being struck. Do you see the point here? The majority of the harvest has to be at a certain point so that the harvest can be destroyed. If not, the plague of hell, there was no point to it. The plague of hell wiped out Egypt's harvest. People died of starvation. That's how severe the judgment was. If you're too early in the season, that verse makes no sense whatsoever. Um, However, the wheat in the spout, they survived because they're late crops. Deuteronomy 16.1, guard the new moon of Aviv. People always forget this commandment, by the way, when they, when they talk about guarding the appointed times. Now, the new moon of Aviv is not an appointed time, but we are called to guard it. To sh and the word there is shamar, you know, to guard. Why would you have to guard the new moon of Aviv? Because it starts the year off and it starts the whole cycle of the appointed times. Here's the thing. This is why I say the majority of the harvest has to be Aviv at the new moon. Because it tells you to guard the new moon of Aviv. Who here has seen the Elohim's clock? And I use the term Michaelville. This is how simple it is. You look up in the sky, you see the crescent. Does it look like spring? Yes or no? Is my barley ready at the new moon? No, it's not. Oh, we're still in winter. Next month comes around, you see the crescent again. Is my barley of Eve? Is, does it look like things are coming to life? No. Oh, we're still in winter. Following month, same again. You look at your crops, ah. If you get to the new moon and you can go, you know what, my, my harvest is going to be ready very soon, you know, it's the new, you know you're in the new year. This is the simplicity that's in Messiah. But I have to really underscore, the majority of the harvest has to be of Eve at the new moon. None of this, well, in two, three weeks, it might be ready. You've got to realise the Egyptians lost a ready harvest. It was this close to being harvested, they lost the whole lot. First point. The timing of the first fruits offering. We know that first fruits occurs within unleavened bread, which is in the month of Aviv. Leviticus 23.10, speak to the children of Israel and you shall say to them, when you come into the land which I give you and you shall reap its harvest, 
then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. What's the giveaway here of the timing of the year? Pardon? When you reap the harvest. Do you reap the harvest when it's almost ready? No. You reap the harvest when it's ready. Then you bring a sheaf of first fruits. This is one of the things that snuck in in modern times that you can just bring a, 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 a first fruits in the hope that the rest of the harvest is going to be ready. It's telling you that you, you shall reap the harvest, i.e. grain. When you're reaping grain, you're reaping fully mature grain that you can turn into flour. Then you bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. We read right over this and the noise in our head from the traditions we've picked up blocks out the plain reading of the Torah. When you reap the harvest, if you want to reap your harvest while it's still, your grain is still soft, go ahead. You do not eat bread or roasted grain or fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your Elohim, a law forever throughout your generations and all your dwelling. What does it not say here? People say that you can't eat of the harvest, and I've mistakenly said this in the past, I have to put my hand up, that you can't eat of the harvest until first fruits. It doesn't say that. It says you don't eat of the harvest until you've brought your offering to the priest. Now, we'll get to why this is important later on, because here's the thing, what's one of the commandments with unleavened bread? that you have to do every day. You have to eat unleavened bread. Let me ask you this, if you're not allowed to eat of the harvest, how are you supposed to fulfill that command? Because sometimes, like when Yeshua died, we know first fruits was smack bang in the middle of the week of unleavened bread, wasn't it? Day, three days and three nights. Do you mean that now for the days before they couldn't eat unleavened bread? Oh, but Michael, they were, they were storing the grain from last year. You don't know that. What if you're poor? Do you think you've got a store of grain? How do the poor fulfill the command to eat unleavened bread if they've got no field? Where would they have got their, their, their wheat from? Or sorry, their barley from? From the gleanings. Oh, but they're not allowed to eat unleavened bread because it has. Do you see the conundrum here? So, it tells you you bring the sheaf when you are reaping your harvest. The reason you think that the sheaf has to be green is because you've been told the word of Eve means green or in ear. That's the only reason you, you think that. The scholars will fully agree we don't actually fully know for sure what the word of Eve means. They'll tell you, and you have to be honest with that. But what we do know is that you're bringing the sheaf of first fruits when you're reaping the harvest, and you reap a harvest when it's ready, not when it's green. First fruits just means that, first fruits. Doesn't mean green. Deuteronomy 16.9, count seven weeks for yourself. So we know that the counting of the Omer to Shavuot begins with first fruits. Begin to count seven weeks from the time that you begin to put the sickle to the grain. What does it mean to put the sickle to the grain? To harvest. When do you harvest? When the harvest is almost ready or when it's ready? When it's ready. If not, you leave it on the plant. So that, and again, we, we, we forget these things. All of the appointed times need to be in season. And I mentioned this, but I really want to drill this down as well, because hopefully you're seeing that the harvest 
uh, of the barley needs to be in season, because if not, you can't eat unleavened bread. And to make bread, you need flour. And to have flour, you need grain that's ready, not almost ready. Until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, so Shavuot, you count 50 days, then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yah. Bring from your dwellings for a wave offering two loaves of bread of two tenths of an ephah baked with leaven, first fruits to Yah. This is speaking of the wheat harvest. Is the wheat ready or almost ready? It's ready. You've made flour from it. And to make bread, you had to use fine flour. You had to sift it. If your wheat is soft, good luck making flour. The, the wheat harvest is ready to offer up. The, so again, if you're now starting month one, a month too soon, not only are you not going to have unleavened bread for unleavened bread, but you're now not going to have two loaves to offer on Shavuot. It doesn't stop there. Three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Guard the festival of Matzot, unleavened bread. Seven days you eat unleavened bread, as I command you. So again, if your harvest is not ready. At the appointed time, the new moon of Aviv, for in it you came out of Mitzrayim. Do not appear to me before, before me empty-handed. The festival of the harvest, of the first fruit of your labours, which you have sown in the field. So this is speaking of Shavuot. Shavuot is a first fruits festival as well. This is why you'll hear Curtis say the first of the first fruits, referring to the one in unleavened bread. The festival of the ingathering at the outgoing of the year, this is Sukkot, when you have gathered in the fruit of your labours from the field. Not while you are gathering, when you have gathered. So by the time Sukkot comes round, your fruit needs to be in prepared. And remember that in ancient times, they didn't have fridges and freezers and cling film and shrink wrap. Not only did you have to pick your fruit, you had to process it there and then. Now, those of you who make jams, wines and all this type of stuff, that's time consuming. So not only do you have to collect your harvest, you have to process it or it's going off very quickly. You're in the Middle East. It's hot out there. Think about this. When is the gathering of the spiritual harvest at the end of the age? What moed? When's the resurrection? Because that's the gathering, right? It's Yom Teruah. Does Yom Teruah happen before or after Sukkot? Before. Well, that makes sense of this verse, that you're going to have Sukkot once you've gathered your fruit from your labours. The... Think of the spiritual picture here. Do you think Messiah is going to reap a harvest that's not ready to be reaped? You know, if you reap fruit too early, I've tried making wine from fruit that's not too ripe. It's sharp and bitter. You don't want your fruit to be unripe or ripening. Same with your jams and stuff like that. They, they, they've got no depth of flavour, your preserves. Think about the spiritual shadow picture. The harvest, the gathering of his people, and we know where the harvest happens at Yom Teruah, in the lead up to Yom, uh, to Yom Kippur and the Feast of Sukkot. This is what people like, again, we don't connect the agriculture to the spiritual weightier matter. If you're doing that a year too early, Messiah's, in Revelation it says the harvest of fruit is ready. Go and reap. And that's tied to resurrection. So that means that you're reaping in the lead up to the full feasts. Why do you think you would celebrate in the, at Sukkot? we get a break. You're a farmer. During winter, you're preparing for summer. And during summer, you're dealing with harvest. And you get these two little blips in between where you get to have a, a breather. Time to celebrate. 
Think about if the harvest is not ready for the unleavened bread, do you really think that Yah wants you reaping and harvesting the fields during unleavened bread? Where were all the males? In Jerusalem. Oh, they can't reap the harvest. Do, do you see the point? Why would you be working during the Feast of Tabernacles? You're tabernacling. There's the other one that people seem to forget. What about the poor? Um, we made mention of you don't have a field, you've lost your possession, right? You've been sold into slavery, you're commanded to eat unleavened bread. You don't have a store of grain from last year, so what are you going to do? Is Yah being capricious? Curtis said something really interesting. If you want to spot Mystery Babylon, plug in the poor. And if the poor get shafted, it's Mystery Babylon. And it's the traditions of men. Because we know our king has a heart for the poor. Same with um, Sukkot and Shavuot. Regarding Shavuot, this is actually part of the commandment. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not completely reap the corners of your field when you reap. Do not gather in any gleaning from your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am Yah, your Elohim. Why does he put that right after Shavuot? You've just been given Leviticus 23, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Shavuot, the barley harvest, the wheat harvest. And he's saying, guys, it's not about you. You're a nation. I've commanded this to all the house of Israel. Do not leave the poor out of this because if not, their cry is going to come up to me and that will go against you. And this is why scripturally we do not believe we're in the Aviv. That is why, because let me put it on a really weightier matter. If you're going to have an early month of Aviv and let's say the poor is not allowed to glean from the harvest, you're saying that you're going to let them starve to death because first fruits hasn't occurred yet. The offering hasn't been offered. Good luck with that one. Do, do you see? Everything has to be at its appointed time. So now I know there's going to be people that go, but, 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 Michael and keyboard warrior me, like, please don't send me the email. I will send it straight into my weirdness folder. I have a folder called weirdness. Do not be the one to go into that folder. I'm not, I'm being serious, by the way. I have a weirdness folder and it's filling up very nicely, especially around this time. But this, people are like, people are asking me the same question. Or people are going, Michael, we heard what you said in the announcement last week, but so and so is saying otherwise. And it's like, well, you're only confused because you're drinking from many fountains. So I'm not saying this to be awkward or to condemn. If people are still convicted that now's the Aviv, okay, go and whatever you do, do it with integrity. That's what we ask. Do it with integrity. Uh, but Curtis and I are at the point where our integrity, in light of what I've just gone through, we, we can't go there. And as I mentioned in the announcement last week, it would serve me well for my flesh to have everything a month earlier because then Sukkot would be a lot warmer. And I could still wear shorts and vests at the Feast of Sukkot. But I can't let that be the deciding factor. And for, for those who don't know, the UK gets cold mid-October, wet, miserable. It's not camping weather and some people still do it. So hopefully that makes more sense rather than me just talking at you. These are the reasons why. These are the reasons why. Make sense? <laughs>